You know, I think for me and for you and other people on the team in 2009 when we embarked on the investigation, it was really an eye-opening experience to look at India with maybe one or two robots that were there that really were not being used and to develop a true market penetration strategy to grow the business. Not only clinically, where we met a number of your colleagues and other physicians from some pretty significant hospitals, but also to put a plan in place in order to grow robotic surgery. You know, and if you look where we started in 2009 and where you are today with, you know, fairly widespread use of robotic surgery, particularly prostate surgery in India, the progress is incredible. So I think the foundations that we lay laid. Um, has certainly been very successful. Rob, there is another question the foundation is grappling. If you recall, the mission of the foundation was not to make robotic surgery available to the cream of the society. And what foundation feels is that our job is undone till really we get to the poorest of work. Mm -hmm. Now here, in the business language, I'm talking impossible, getting the cutting edge, highest level technology available to the poorest of right. poor. And in India, if you look at the statistics, 70 percent of the population mm -hmm. is below the average income. Mm -hmm. Now, foundation has been trying to think about this impossible and in terms of a social business, because I don't think charity is an answer to this. Do you have any ideas how we could approach to grow? Because now we have a great achievement of bringing down the cost of robotic surgery, right. but still it leaves almost 98% of the people yeah. out of the ambit of this scope of you surgery. Know, I, I, I think Dr. Bandari, you know, the original concept for robotic surgery was aimed at the upper middle class, about 250 million people in India. And I think you've hit that market pretty well. You know, below poverty line is what, over 600 million people in India. And I think it will probably be more of a two-part strategy. You know, overall volume, process improvement, and accessibility uh, by patients will reduce the cost of the procedure. And I think we've seen that in the States, and you're starting to see that in India, the actual operational perform performance improvement will drive down the cost. But I don't think that will get it to a point where people that live on you know, less than a dollar a day will ever be able to afford it. So I think it is still tying it back to uh, some kind of charitable or foundation funding or a cooperation with other companies to help fund some of the robotic surgery. You know, robotic surgery replaces replace the most part traditional, uh, traditional surgery. There's still a good place for that in India as in most markets, uh, whether robotic surgery and the cost of capital and the actual incremental cost of the procedure will ever be at the lowest level that would ever replace traditional surgery. I'm not sure that's any time in the next 10 years. But I think truly finding a compromise that bridges the gap between people with low means to be able to pay for it and those that can pay, maybe there's a good gap, a good compromise in between that can be achieved. We have a big problem, as you understand. It's a monopoly item. It is expensive, not only the capital investment, because capital-intensive investments could be engineered through philanthropy. Mm -hmm. But when it needs a higher maintenance and recurring cost, then right. it is very difficult. The charities don't come as a mm -hmm. persistent. They are always pulsatile in nature. So uh, what we are thinking in terms of is a social business, mm -hmm. wherein we want to involve all the stakeholders, mm -hmm. whether it is possible or not. Because as you know, currently, the government is funding these below poverty line people, but the amount they give for a robotic prostate, uh, prosthetic surgery is mm -hmm. such a paltry sum, mm -hmm. less than $900. Mm -hmm. And I am left with the challenge that how do I bridge and make robotic surgery available within the money which is sourced from the government insurance company. So uh, if the intuitive agrees to give me a robot free of cost and then I can put pressure on the 
local dealers to do a maintenance free. And this we are trying to create exclusively for below poverty line. So uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a kind of thing, but I think if we do a next XMAP project, mm -hmm. uh, my proposal would be to make it, uh, how do you convert into a successful social business? I think what's well recognized in India and starting to grow is these public-private partnerships. Mm -hmm. And I think to the point you say, Dr. Bandari, looking at the foundation, looking at Intuitive Surgical, but also looking at perhaps some of the very large companies that are very successful in India that employ significant populations. Tying that into the government programs to support BPL, uh, I think that's the emphasis that needs to be put on this partnership. Creating enough critical mass with, as you say, the stakeholders to, to, to create revenue to start to pay for some of these surgeries. It's going to take some big investment partners that see the overall good long term, not only for the patients, for their employees, but for the country as a whole, to invest money uh, in order to, to grow robotic surgery down through poverty line. Compared to when we started, there's a lot of progress in India. Not only the number of uh, installations, the volumes of procedures has been done. Most important of all, there's a lot of research is happening. As uh, many of you know, the kidney transplant, uh, first time in the world, is done in India. Now the world will be adapting. And there's so many other opportunities, including head and neck, all these areas. So we feel India will become the real leader. This is an absolute classic example of how to execute both uh, a market penetration strategy, uh, how to fund it and capitalize it, how to implement it and how to grow it. I would say, you know, the foundation and the team, and certainly led by you, Dr. Bandari, has done an incredible job over the last four or five years. I think that approach could be used for other market penetrations into India, particularly in the healthcare, perhaps with other types of surgical processes or other uh, other processes in healthcare. It certainly was very, very successful. I think in terms of uh, robotic surgery, in particular around prosthetic surgery, the, the next challenge is going to be uh, similar to the first challenge that you and I faced. Do we grow more in geographical plane or do we grow more into different types of more modalities? And I think that will be a key challenge going forward is the robot mainly focused on prostate or is there other areas that it can increase in uh, to the extent it has done in the US and in Europe and, and Asia. Thank you very much Rob.